Good morning, and today is Tuesday, May 24th, 2022, and I want to personally welcome you to Morning Encounter. Today is Testimony Tuesday, and I'm already seeing the testimony in the comment section. I see a testimony of you already there. I see your names. That's letting me know that the Lord woke you up this morning. The Lord started you on your way. That is one of your testimonies today, and I thank God for each and every one of you. The Bible reminds us in Psalms 118 and 24 that this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. We are Luke 18 and 1 generation. We are a group of people who will pray and not faint. And I would love it if you would take a moment and take your device and share out today's broadcast. Let somebody know that you're here. We're here praying. We're here believing God. We're here interceding. Uh, we're here um, in fellowship. Let somebody know that we're here. And if you haven't done so already, um, invite someone to join the prayer group. Invite someone to join the or follow the group page. Um, let somebody know that we're here and we're here praying and believing God with them. Um, I want to come over and say good morning to each of you. Thank God for you being on. We were having a little bit of technical difficulty um, with our startup, but um, thank you all for bearing with us. Hopefully we'll have everything um, ironed out for tomorrow's broadcast. I want to say good morning to everyone. Good morning, Cousin V. God bless you. It's great to see you on this morning. Good morning to my sister, uh, Kimmy. God bless you. It's great to see you on today. Good morning, Mother Duncan. It's great to see you on this morning. And good morning, Sister Cece. She already has a testimony of the Lord. She said, uh, good blessed morning, everyone. She said, I had my colonoscopy yesterday, and they found three polyps. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They found three polyps. I'm trying to see the rest of it. But God... But God, she said, my original appointment was scheduled for the end of July, but I'm blessed to be uh, uh, where they were able to get me in on her day off yesterday. I thank God. She said, my God is so awesome. I love him. I love him. I love him. Hallelujah. God knows exactly what to do. He knows exactly how, how the schedule lined up. Hallelujah. And made a way. Sometimes they can make schedules for you and, and try to decide for you what you need. And God made a way. So we thank God for making that way making that crooked path straight for you and able to do what they needed to do. And we thank God for you, Sister Cece. Thank you for sharing that testimony. And I'm thankful to the Lord that you're even on the broadcast today. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Um, and if anyone else has a testimony, don't hesitate. You can share out. Hallelujah. God is good. We love the Lord. And remember what we did yesterday. We let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And we are the redeemed. We are the delivered. We are the set free. We are the saved. Hallelujah. He snatched us out of a, uh, what is the old song? He snatched us out of the of a burning hell. Yes, he did. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That's I'm kind of dating myself there a little bit. I remember that song from those Friday night services hallelujah at at the home church where i grew up when i was a kid they would sing those songs and those praise songs sunday night services friday night services tuesday night uh what did they have to, on tuesday tuesday night prayer wednesday night it was like we were in church every day wednesday night um bible study and they would sing those songs and i would think why well, snatch my soul from a burning yeah he snatched my soul yeah he delivered me yes he set me free yes he, 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 he kept my mind. I think I posted yesterday. I thank God for keeping my mind in perfect peace. You never know what people are dealing with. You never know what's going on with folks. Hallelujah. You don't know if you're standing next to somebody in the grocery store that is going to have a mental breakdown. You don't know that the people that you're driving next to, what their mind is on while they're driving, but they stayed in your their lane and never crossed that line. You never know the, uh, the things that God is keeping us, danger seen and unseen. I used to wonder, what are they talking about? Danger seen and unseen? How can you how can you be excited about a danger that you didn't even know was there? Well, listen, I thank God that God kept me even when when I didn't know I was being kept. When I thought I was going along my regular day, when I thought I was doing what I normally do, huh? When I thought that I was just going along doing my normal thing, going to lunch like on a normal day, going to my job on a normal day, but God kept me, hallelujah, in perfect peace. Huh? Why? Because I kept my mind stayed on him. And sometimes we get distracted. Sometimes we get um, we think about other things. How many of you know uh, have had an opportunity? You're driving and you 
you wonder, how did I even get here? My mind wasn't even on what I was doing. I don't even know how I got to work. I don't even know how I got home. But 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 you did. God blessed you to be able to even just get home safely. Y'all don't know how much of a blessing that is. How God blessed you to go through your work day without any issues. Hallelujah. You just go along about your day, but you don't even realize how much, how many things God has kept you from. Listen, I want to thank God. I want to lift up hands. Hallelujah. And bless the name of the Lord for him keeping us, for him making a way for us and sustaining us, for him allowing us to see this new day full of his grace and mercy. God, I bless your name and I honor you, God, for keeping us even with issues in our body that we didn't know about. God, I thank you for blessing and touching Sister Cece. Lord, I thank you for turning the situation around and allowing the appointment to be now instead of later. God, I thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. That what the enemy meant for evil, you turned it around, turned it around for her good. God, I bless your name. Hallelujah. For what you're doing in her life, how you blessed her, how you blessed her in her body, how you're blessing her in her finances, how you're blessing her to overcome. Hallelujah. God, we thank you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And it is so. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God, I thank you for each and every person under the sound of my voice. Hallelujah. Each and every person that's standing in the need of prayer, each and every prayer request, those that are typed in and those that are unknown. God, we thank you. And Lord, I pray that you would bless. Lord, touch my sister. Lord, God, bless her now. God, Lord, you know what she is need of. You know the desires of her heart. You know what she has up before you. And God, I pray that you would touch her now in the name of Jesus. Lord, God bless her even in her mind in her in her in her in her mental stability oh God in the name of Jesus Lord God hallelujah help her to keep her mind stayed on you hallelujah even when her back is up against the wall and she has to make decisions seemingly like it's on the on the quick on the on the fly Lord God give her a peace of mind hallelujah to make the right decisions in the name of Jesus and God I thank you for her life I thank you for blessing her. I thank you for giving her your increase in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Cover her now in your precious blood in the name of Jesus. Cover her now in your precious blood, God. Thank you for touching her life. Thank you for touching her children. Thank you for touching her grandchildren in the name of Jesus. And thank you for the restoration through her bloodline, her rest restoration through her bloodline, through her children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That what was is no longer. Hallelujah. That your love will prevail. That your love will set the, 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 the captivity of the mind in the name of Jesus. Set them free in the name of Jesus God. And we thank you for her now. In Jesus Jesus name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. And it is so. Glory be to God. God, I thank you. Hallelujah. God, we praise you. And God, we give you all of the glory. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Hallelujah. We're going to jump over. Hallelujah. Into into the scripture for today. Hallelujah. I'm not exactly sure which way we should go today. So I'm just going to share out both and let the Lord have his way. Hallelujah. Because they're both relevant and they're both, uh, um, we both can, uh, can be applied to where we are. If, if you can't apply it today, I'm sure you can apply it tomorrow or the day after or next week. Hallelujah. So we thank God today for all that he's doing, how he's blessing each and every one. Hallelujah. We're going to head over to the word, to the scripture for today. Hallelujah. The first passage of scripture. Thank you, Jesus. First passage of scripture is coming from Romans chapter 12, verse 10. And I have um, the Amplified Bible pulled up for both of these um, portions of scripture. The Amplified Bible pulled up for both. And uh, the scripture reads in Romans chapter 12, verse 10, it says, be devoted to one another with authentic brotherly affection as members of one family. Give preference to one another in honor. Give preference to one another in honor. Listen, I, I look when I look upon this scripture, I often think about or I'm thinking about um, how we are to be devoted to one another with authentic brotherly affection. We're supposed to love each other with brotherly love, even if we're not related 
to one another. It shouldn't, people should wonder if we're all together. Let's say we're all together in one room. I have two relatives on here. I believe they're still on here. And I have two sisters in Christ that I know from um, our local our local uh, body of believers. And when we're together, it shouldn't look like I'm showing favoritism to my cousin and my sister over my my sister in Christ and my, my, my sister, my, my two sisters in Christ. It should not look like I'm showing favoritism to my to those that I'm connected to from my local body versus my family. We should all be uh, devoted to one another. And we should, when we when they look upon us, they should wonder, well, man, they must all be related because they are showing each other, um, they're, they're showing preference to one another and they're showing honor to one another. If I ever met Sister Cookie um, in person, I should be able to um, hug her and love her in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And do the same with my family. We should be authentic. It should not be fake. It should not be a farce. It should not be something that's made up because uh, people can tell when you're when you're kind of just going through the motions. I, you know, I often use um, Kenyatta, uh, Sister Kenyatta, as an example. Sometimes when I'm explaining relationships with others, because I saw her react or respond or relate to people in ways I had not seen. I've given you an example of we've been in the in the in the drive through. This is when I was early saved, young young saved, and we would be in the drive through. And I'm like, why is she so friendly with the person that's taking the order? Can we just take the order and keep it moving? But she would she would be in conversation with the person. You know, we'd be trying to order a cheeseburger, and she's you know, how are you today? It's great to great. Thank you for taking our order today. And she placed the order, and she say thank you. And the person wouldn't say thank you. We drive up, and she's having a whole conversation. I'm like, we don't know these people. Well, you know, she was showing for, forth that authentic brotherly affection. We you know we you win you win people over. Uh, just think about it. You win. Um, you don't they say you win flies with uh, with honey rather than with vinegar. Um, you you win people over by that brotherly love. Hallelujah. You never know who may come into the knowledge of Christ because you showed them brotherly love because you treated them with an affection that they will not necessarily receive out in the world. They would not necessarily receive out on the streets, out on their job. They wonder, well, why are you being so nice? Well, why are you being so compassionate? Well, you know what? I need to be devoted to one another. It's not saying that I hold you, hold you in a higher authority over anyone, but I'm showing you the same uh, connection and the same um, affection as I would, just like a family member. Hallelujah. And I'm showing honor. That's another thing that you don't get so much out in the world. There's so much going on in our community so much so many shootings and murders and people um getting in arguments and fights and you know even even in our in our public school system like people don't know how to de-escalate people don't know how to uh, take a walk back up you know let's treat each other with some respect before you just kind of go crazy on someone uh, no we don't and you don't even see that being taught as much uh, showing respect you see kids uh, going off on their parents in the store and uh, saying all manner of evil and it's like what in the world we have to you know it's what 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 they're taught um, I, I was listening to a ministry uh, yesterday and and the, the pastors were saying you know when you're raising children um, you should be showing them um, the the Christian way of life if you're if you're saying you profess in Christianity and salvation there's a certain way that you should live so if you are keeping up chaos in at home if you're keeping up confusion you that's what you're showing you that's your representation of jesus to your children and if you're keeping up argument if you're keeping up backbiting and hatred that's that's their image of who jesus is to a to, to a child to a teenager hallelujah so how can you expect a, a teenager to grow up in a christian home and to see chaos and to see hatred and to see the, the wife going off on the husband and the husband disrespecting the wife and expect them to have a clear picture of what Christianity looks like. Then they get out in the world. They can't they can't figure out. They can't find the divide because the home life looks so much. The Christian home life, quote, Christian home life looks so much like the world home life. They don't know. They don't like the world standard. They, they can't tell what's what's what and they're not able to hallelujah to be devoted to one another they're not able to able to show um uh uh uh, oh, uh what's the word i'm looking for they're not able to show honor to one another 
So, so they get into a situation or they get into an altercation. They don't know how to de-escalate because they don't know what that looks like. So we really have to be careful, even with raising our children. Now, you all know I don't have any natural born children, but there's a way that even I should speak to my children at work. I should speak to the children that are around us uh, uh, with, with a level of respect. Hallelujah. So then they, in turn, will take that respect and share it with another uh, student or they take that respect and share it with another teacher. They'll say, well, Miss Drayton talks to her students like that. Well, I wonder how come my other teacher doesn't talk to talk to us like this. Well, I, I have a level. I had a student write me a note just yesterday. I didn't bring it home with me. It's actually in my car. But the student wrote me a note and said, I'm just grateful to be your teacher. I've learned so much about you and you give you show us so much respect. And, and this is a this is a this is a student that's like barely, you know, barely 12 or 13 years old. How do they know? How do they know? It's because they see the difference. Other teachers may treat kids one way, but Miss Drayton teaches them something different. It's a different setup. And I want to be um, I find that some kids, they may not even be the best players, but they want to be in, in my in my class because I like to show um, everyone the same level of respect doesn't matter how well you play doesn't matter how well you do on a test I'm going to show you respect because in turn I do want to receive some level of respect back and some teachers have even said and I've had administrators say to me hallelujah that your students you give a signal and your students are immediately quiet how do you do that I said well that's something that we teach from fourth grade they're when they're little bitty but it's also you know if a student comes up to me I stop what I'm doing and I address them I talk to them um, I, I listen to what they have to say and I think that's really important in our in our Christian walk not to get so high and mighty sometimes we get high and mighty and we don't want to listen we don't want to hear other people's side of, of what's going on but we have to make sure that we're giving preference to preference to one another and we're showing each other honor Hallelujah. We're showing each other honor. Look at the scripture in Colossians 4 and 6. And I, this is this can kind of tie in with how we treat each other. Um, I've heard my pastor say many times that the Ten Commandments is, is, is about, um, I think, six of the Ten Commandments talk about how we should treat one another. How our relationship should be towards one another. And you, you, you'd be surprised that your life can be blessed by how you treat other people. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. In there is scripture that talks about um, how can you treat um, God with so much reverence and respect and love God that you cannot see, but you can't love the brother or sister that you see every day, the one that you can actually lay your eyes upon. So we have to make sure that we're treating each other with loving, loving kindness and with respect. Look at Colossians 4 and 6 here in the Amplified Bible. It says, let your speech at all times be gracious and pleasant, seasoned with salt, so that you will know how to answer each one who questions you, Hallelujah! Then it talks about how we how we should talk, how we how we should respond to people, Hallelujah! You ever had um, a, a plate of food that was just too salty, <laughs> and you're like, "Take this back! I cannot eat this." Not only will um, you know it will mess up my system, but it just it does not taste good. I, I don't want this. Get this from in front of me. Or have you ever had? Um, a plate of food that didn't have enough salt on it didn't have enough seasoning it didn't have anything on it It was just like bland you're like take this away it has nothing on it put something on here to make it taste better sometimes we need to take a step back and let our speech be gracious and in, 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 in this translation it says at all times not just when it's convenient for you, not when you just want it to be, not when someone else is watching you so that you respond in a certain way. No, it says let your speech at all times, uh, that's, that's uh, you know, and be gracious and pleasant, seasoned with salt. Hallelujah. Uh, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you can say everything you want to say. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean your opinion has to be heard all the time. Sometimes you have to be uh, seasoned with salt. And know how to answer the ones who question you. Stop always being flippant. Stop always being hallelujah. Stop always being flippant when, when people come to you and ask questions. We don't have to always respond all the time. Sometimes it's best not to say anything at all. Sometimes it's best to not say anything at all. Be careful how you respond. Hallelujah. Some people will expect you to respond a certain way. Oh, they're a Christian. They're going to respond this way. They're, they're a Christian. They're not. No, just take a step back and ask the Lord. Sometimes you need to ask God, what should I say 
in this situation? What should I say? Hallelujah. In response to what I'm seeing, you don't have to always be the first person to answer. Maybe not saying anything is the thing to, to do. Maybe not saying anything is the right answer. Well, Miss Drayton, what do you think about that? I don't have anything to say about that because it's best to, for me not to say anything than to say the wrong thing. Hallelujah. Ever heard that saying? If you don't have something good to say, don't say anything at all. I think it stems from this passage um, that you know, at all times when you say something, you should be gracious and pleasant. We should not hear all kinds of filthy language coming out of our mouths and uh, filthy um, just different phrases that we hear, um, things that you hear the world say. We shouldn't always be saying and repeating everything the world is saying. Hallelujah. We should be different. We should be different and set apart. When people come into our presence, they should know that there's a difference. Now, of course, I've talked about many times before, you don't have to walk around with a big old cross around your neck the size of Cleveland and walk around with a Bible the size of, I don't know, uh, is your family Bible. You guys remember those big family Bibles when somebody would pass away? Um, I, I remember my dad's job uh, when I, I can't remember who passed away, but they gave us a big family Bible. I think we have two of those. Or my parents have two at their house. I mean, just giant. They're like that thick. And um, back when I was a little bitty kid, we would visit my grandmother's house. One of those Bibles would be opened up on her coffee table. And I always wanted to turn the page. <laughs> I was that kid. I always wanted to turn the page. It was always set on one page. And I'm like, can we turn the page? What's on the next page? Are we are we reading through this book or what? What are we doing? But but we, we have to make sure that um, you know we we're not necessarily just carrying around this big Bible, wearing this big cross, got a sign on us saying we're Christian. No, we should our speech should reflect what we're walking every day. Our speech should reflect what we're living every day. It should not be a thing. Oh, it's Sunday. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk like I'm saved today. No, we should be talking like. You know, our our speech should be gracious and pleasant all the time, not just on on Saturday. Or if your church meets on Saturday, or your church meets on Friday, or or online, whatever, it should not just be. Oh well, my pastor's around, so I'm going to speak gracious and and pleasant. But you have been saying all manner of evil all week. <laughs> Uh, I told some of my kids, I'm like, I'm going to bring some ivory soap because you all have a potty mouth. We It should not be just because you're around um, certain people. I had one kid say to me, uh, I heard an uh, older kid, This is I teach high school as well, you guys know, and I heard um, an older kid use, a, we, we call it colorful language, and uh, I heard another kid say, we don't talk like that in Ms. Drayton's class, and I didn't say, I didn't have to say anything. And I tell the kids from young, we don't, hey, you all are too smart to use language like that. Let's find some other words. You all are AP and honor students. Let's find some of those college words, those those nice seven and eight letter words to, to express your frustration or your dislike about something. You all are way too bright to speak like that. And and that that's just I don't want to I don't want to hear a lot of me personally, I don't want to hear a lot of um, bad words. In my classroom, I don't speak that way to my students, no matter the frustration level. And I don't want them to speak that way and feel comfortable with speaking that way in my classroom. And it was so interesting. I was in my office and I heard this and I heard the second kid say to the first kid, we don't talk like that in Miss Drayton's classroom. So uh, um, somebody said, Miss Drayton, can we go in the hall for a second? I said, you sure can. And I let them go in the hall and, and, and have the rest of their conversation. But they know when they come into my classroom. We're going to have a level of respect for one another. There's certain things like, I, you know, I don't like kids telling each other shut up because that I think that that's a downgrade. I really just don't like that. Even from back before salvation, I just never liked shut up. It just sounded so uh, it just sounded so negative and demanding. So I tell the kids, don't say that. Find something else to say. Maybe you're speaking in a tone that, that, that they don't like or, you, you know, just find some other way. And we've. Hey, I've been teaching for 19 years and they have found other ways of communicating and other ways, other words to say than the um, colorful words that you hear sometimes on, on TV. We, we, we just have a level of respect and, and we, we answer each other in that way. And so it's not it's not wrong to ask that or demand that even with your own family, with your children, with your grandkids. Look, when you come over to Nana's house, we don't talk like that. We don't listen to this type of music when we're at Nana's house. You know, we know there, there's just a level of respect and it's okay. It's okay. Don't let people tell you it's not. It's, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> all right so those are the scriptures that we were going to share out to you today i hope you were encouraged by these two passages of scripture we have colossians chapter 4 and 6 if you want to take that screenshot there's the first one and then the um this is the second one we shared of course and the first one here is romans chapter 12 verse 10 romans chapter 12 verse 10 hallelujah glory be to god listen if you have that prayer request you can put it in the comment section at any time you do not have to wait you do not have to wait i think we've already prayed for two of them and i saw uh sister cookie uh will definitely be praying for you hallelujah we'll definitely be praying for you i saw that uh pop up a little bit early we pray for sister cc hallelujah um to pray for sister kimmy um i thought i saw there it is sister cookie's uh, prayer request i have that tag for us to pray for hallelujah sister cc uh saying amen it's important to set a standard of respect children are uh crave uh, stability and structure from us as educators and i pray for all those who are in contact with students daily that's right that's right and they need to when they have that level of respect in your classroom they're going to take that wherever they go and then when they see that it's different they start questioning like well <laughs> they start wondering like which one is right this teacher lets me use you know curse language in their class but miss Drayton won't which one is right and sometimes they'll take that into the other classroom like you know what we're around the teacher we're not going to use swear words or whatnot and uh some i've heard students tell me that oh yeah mr or miss so-and-so uses uses swear words in front of us i said well they said well how do you feel about that i said well in my personal opinion i think that i think it's inappropriate because I should have a level of respect for you as a human being not to use certain language. And we know what those words mean. So I said, you won't hear me saying that in front of you. And I, you know, the kids walk away like, okay. And that they understand I respect them. They respect me. And that's it. it, it. Like I said, I've, I've had educators and I've had um, principals come into my room and say, how are the kids so respectful? How are the kids quiet when you ask them to be you don't have to raise your voice and i'll say i'm not raising my voice we have a signal that i use from fourth graders all the way up to high school kids and they immediately they they stop talking they stop moving and they look to find me where are you what what do you need why are you giving us this signal and they listen and they respond and it, it, there's no yelling there's no screaming there's no um threatening <laughs> i use the signal that's it and we can move on with our class. So I think it's really important to set a standard. That's right, Sister Cece. I agree with you 100%. I think if Tyra was on here, I know she's an educator. Um, we've had other educators that are connected. Um, Sister Jennifer, bro, uh, Pastor JJ, Pastor Andrew, are all teachers. If you show kids respect, nine times out of ten, they're going to give that back to you. And it's almost going to be like innate, like they were they were born to show you that level of respect back. It's nothing that they have to struggle with because you're giving it as well. So I thank God for the scripture, Romans 12 and 10, Colossians 4 and 6. Share that out with people that you're connected to and tag that to your heart. That God will help you even in your relationships with others that you show a level of respect. Even when you're not getting it back, sometimes it's hard to give people respect when you're not getting it back. And that's, I think that's the issue with our society that, um, we, you know, I used to hear, well, you, you, you should take down. You shouldn't always respond. And that's true. You, sh you don't have to always have a response to everything. But if, if you can't walk away from a situation, if you can't, you know, say your piece and walk away, you know, there, there's other issues there. So um, I think our society has a problem with that, that we can't always walk away. We always have to have the last word. And, and, and sometimes in our, the way our culture is now, um, it, can, it can be detrimental in some instances. Yeah, we, we hear about shootings and robberies and murders all the time. And sometimes it's just walking away can, can, can really save a situation. So um, it's, it's, it's truly, truly unfortunate. And that's something, like I said, it, it, sh it has to be taught and started at home. Or if you did not learn it in your house, you, you have to grab hold to this word and then start teaching it to your babies, to your kids, to your grandkids. So, um, listen, I want to thank God for the word. I thank God for each and every one of you. If you haven't already put your prayer requests in the comment section, you can do so now. 
we've been praying as we've been going. So our list is not as long as it normally is. Um, I have uh, two two prayers here um, right now, and then um, we'll just go forward in the name of God. So um, thank you all for being on. Thank you all for watching and listening, and thank you all for sharing out today's broadcast. All right, so we're going to head into prayer. Like I said, we have two. We're going to pray for Sister Cookie. And we're going to pray for our family and those that are connected to us. Thank God for each and every one of you. Thank you for joining us um, on our modified schedule. I'm not sure if we'll keep the 6 o'clock start time, but um, yeah, I'm not sure. We may go back to 5. I'm not sure. Um, it's, it's a little bit of an adjustment even for me, so we, we will get things all figured out. Um, hallelujah. So let's go ahead and get into our prayer time. So we're going to pray for Sister Cookie. If I don't see any other request, requests, we're going to pray Sister Cookie's request and Cousin V's request for our family and all those connected to us. And then we will be out of your way. Hallelujah. So glory be to God. God, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you right now for those under the sound of my voice, those that are still watching. Hallelujah. Those that will watch later, those who will come in later. Lord God, we thank you, hallelujah, for all that you're doing, all that you've done. Thank you for blessing and covering and keeping and sustaining. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity to share out in your word, to share out in prayer, to share out and just be connected. Lord, thank you for showing us how we can um, be authentic and show brotherly love to one another, that we don't um, honor one over the other, but and we don't show preference for one over the other, but we show each other uh, respect and honor. Hallelujah. Lord, we also thank you. Hallelujah for teaching us to showing us when to speak and when not to speak, when to say something, when to hold back, to be gracious and pleasant, have our words great, uh, seasoned with salt. Hallelujah. So that we know how to answer. Thank you for this practical teaching, Lord, that we can apply to our everyday life. Hallelujah. As saints and as Christians, Lord God, walking this walk, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to um, to, to, to grow in this walk and to to do a self check lord am i responding to people in the way that you would have me to am i reacting to people am i listening to what people are saying versus just saying something back hallelujah that my, my speech be gracious that means showing someone else grace showing someone else mercy even in how i respond to them god and we thank you lord for all that you're doing and revealing yourself through the word hallelujah and helping us to see you and help us to see ourselves where we are coming up short through the word of God. God, we thank you. We bless you and we honor you. Lord God, we're praying for those listed here. Hallelujah. That have prayer requests. We're praying for them. Sister Cookie. Lord God, I ask that you would touch her now. Lord God, you know the situation at hand. You know what she has need of. You know the desires of her heart. And Lord, we're just asking that you come in and have your way. That you would touch now in the name of Jesus. That you would heal, deliver, and set free. Lord God, have your way in her life. Hallelujah. That you would have your complete way. Hallelujah. When she wants to respond, when she wants to do things on her own, Lord, I pray that you would have your way, that you will lead and guide her, that you will order her steps according to your will and purpose. God, and I thank you for her life. I thank you for everything that you're doing in her life. Thank you for revealing yourself even the more to her, God. And God, we praise you, we honor you, and we glorify you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. And it is so Glory be to God. Lord God, I thank you for Mother Duncan. Lord God, I thank you for blessing her. I thank you for keeping and covering her. Lord, I thank you for making your way in her life. Hallelujah. Thank you for giving her the increase. Thank you for providing her with increase in the name of Jesus, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, the very thing that she has need of, the very thing that she has desire of, that she has up before you. Lord God, thank you for making that way for her in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord, for blessing her and her husband. Thank you for blessing her family. Hallelujah. Her and her daughter. Hallelujah. Her grandchildren. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Her daughter-in-law, Lord God. Thank you for having your way. Thank you for blessing her entire family, God. In the name of Jesus, thank you for working out miracles in their household. In the name of Jesus, God, and we thank you for it now. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And it is so. And Lord God, we thank you, Lord, for touching our family. Lord God, we ask that you would come in and touch our family, that you would bless our family. Hallelujah. From our husbands, our spouses, our wives, Lord God, all the way down through our children and our grandchildren, great-grandchildren, our parents. Our nieces and nephews, oh God, our aunts and uncles, Lord God, our cousins, Lord God. Lord, we pray that you would come in and break every generational curse off of our family. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, have your way. In the name of Jesus, let love abound in, the, in our families, oh God. In the name of Jesus, where there was a lack of love, love let love 
abound in the name of Jesus. Let your peace abound in our families, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you right now. Hallelujah, God, we pray praise you. Hallelujah. We give you the glory. Now, Lord, I pray that as we leave from this pres this platform, but never your presence, Lord God, that you will grant your grace and mercy, your grace and mercy throughout this entire day. Lord, we ask that you will cover us, oh God, that you will sustain us and keep us, oh God, in the name of Jesus, even in seasons of not knowing that we were being kept. Thank you for covering us covering our vehicles, covering us on our job, blessing us, hallelujah, blessing us even in our buildings where we work, hallelujah, God, we thank you right now, we glorify you, we praise you, we give you all the glory, Lord, bless our supervisors, those that have leadership and rule over us, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, and we thank you, hallelujah, God, and we pray th those that are dealing with adverse situations on their job, adverse situations with their bosses, Lord God, we pray that you would touch the hearts of the, of the supervisor, that you would touch the heart of the manager in the name of Jesus, where where they've been um, feeling like it, uh, they've been getting over, where they feel like they, where we feel like that they've been um, uh, uh, winning in the situation. Lord, we pray that you would turn their heart around, that you would turn their heart around, God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you right now. Lord, we even thank you for the jobs that we have. We thank you for the ways to, to gain uh, to gain increase in our families, to take care of our families, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us. We thank you for keeping and sustaining us, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask that you would bless those that are watching, bless those that will come back and watch later, That bless those that are listening right now. Hallelujah. Thank you for being a hedge of protection around us, even when we didn't know it, even when we couldn't see it, but we knew you were there. Thank you, Lord God, for your covering. Thank you for covering us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, and we thank you. Hallelujah, God. We praise you. Lord God, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. It's in the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. And it is so. Amen. And it is so. Glory be to God. Listen, I want to thank you all for joining us this morning for Morning Encounter. Thank you for being here. Thank you for finding time in your schedule to join us. We appreciate you. We appreciate you coming on and being a part of the broadcast um, even on our modified time, we thank you all for being here. Uh, don't forget to share out. Let somebody know that we're here. Uh, it looks like we have like a six o'clock start time. Let us let someone know that we're here and um, that we're here for prayer. We're here sharing out the word of God. Hallelujah. We'd love to connect with you. If you haven't already done so, follow us on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram. We're also on TikTok at Spirit in Life PG underscore PG. And let somebody know we're here. We're sharing out the scripture today with those that are there. We we're sharing our prayer. We have a list of people that have been commenting on yesterday's video. And uh, we're, we're offering prayer to those, hallelujah, that have commented. And listen, share out. And share the scripture out. Even if you don't share the platform, let somebody know uh, that we need to be gracious with our speech. Pleasant at all times. Hallelujah. So we know how to answer. And we need to be uh, find a way to be brother, have that brotherly affection. Hallelujah. Not giving preference over one for the other. And show each other honor. Hallelujah. I thank God for each and every one of you. I pray that you have a beautiful, blessed day. Hallelujah. Go in the name of the Lord and the power of his might. And listen. I believe God to you. I pray that you have a beautiful, blessed day, and we'll see you bright and early for Witness Wednesday. Have a beautiful day. We'll see you soon. Bye now.